See, people say to me, you know, uh, you tell me Christ lives in you, tell me, can you walk on water? I said, uh, oh, now, have you walked on water? I said, no, I've never walked on water. Well, why not? You tell me Christ in you? I said, well, he hasn't asked me to yet, but when he does, I will walk on the water. You see? I will walk on the water if he tells me, but he hasn't asked me yet. I've never done a miracle. Why? He's never asked me to. But I have been the body in many miracles that he has done. I have watched it happen. It was my hands I laid on people. These hands. But they are the hands of the Christ. This voice is the voice of the Christ. Be careful what you say. Be careful. Well... Let's go a little further. First Timothy chapter 1. Uh, no, it's Sorry, second Timothy chapter 1. And verse 7, God has not given to us the spirit of fear. Why? Because you have the spirit of Christ in you. And the spirit of Christ does not have the spirit of fear. He is the spirit of understanding. He is the spirit of power and all those other things. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. And that was, of course, Paul speaking about the affliction that the world had put upon him. But I want you to notice verse 9. You can underline this one in your Bible if you're not too religious. It says, Who has saved us? What does the word saved mean? Does it mean you go to heaven and not to hell? No, it's got nothing to do with where you go. The word means to be made whole. It means good health. That's what that word means. So when the Bible talks about being saved, he's not talking about going to heaven when you die. He's talking about you, that is your body, your soul, and your spirit, being made one. Not being made whole in your body, and being made whole in your spirit, and being made whole in your soul. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that. It means to be made whole, that is to be made the one. All right? Keep your finger in there and turn back to Romans chapter 6. And this is not a Bible study, this is following a theme here today. Romans chapter 6. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Now I'm going to read it for you as it was in the Greek. Because you see the translators have added some words because that didn't make sense to them. But I'm going to read it without the extra words. Listen to this. It says, For if we've been planted together in his death, then we shall be his resurrection. Did you hear that? 
if we have been planted together in his death, we shall be his resurrection. Does that make it much clearer for you? Isn't that amazing? See, some of these things that God has told us, we've just glossed over. We haven't really noticed it. But today God is trying to put some of these things to imprint them in your mind and in your heart. This is important. So, it says, going back now to Timothy chapter 1, who has saved us, verse 9, he's made us whole, and he has called us. God never saves you without calling you, because you are being saved for a purpose. Get a hold of this today. You are being saved for a purpose, and the purpose is not to take you to heaven when you die. There's a far greater purpose in God for the reason why God has saved you. What's he saved you from? Well, he saved you from sickness, hasn't he? Well, if he hasn't, he's going to today anyway. He's going to save you from your sickness. Why? Because you can't even respond to his calling while you're sick. If you're sick, how are you going to respond to God? Your body is the temple of God. The body is the expression of the Christ within. How's he going to express himself through you if you've got cancer and you're headed for the grave? Come on. How can your body be the temple of God if you've got cancer? There's only a bit of your body that he can dwell in because the other is messed up, you see, with the cancer. So he's not going to dwell in that. So it says here, you saved us and called us with a holy calling. We're being restored to health and made whole. That's how I translate that verse. We have been restored to health and made whole. A holy calling, we're being made righteous as well not according to our works. So you see, it's nothing to do with how you've lived. It's nothing to do whether you were, you know, a, a Bible scholar, whether you studied the Word, whether you prayed every day, whether you worshipped God. It's got nothing to do with that because the calling of God had nothing to do with you. It had to do with what God planned for your life. This is important. Not according to our purpose, but according to his will and purpose. Did you hear that? What is the will and purpose of God for your life? Huh? Is it to be sick? I don't think so. God has a will and a purpose for your life that he wants to fulfill in you today. You see? Now you're beginning to understand something. Have you ever had much to do with sick people? I have. <laughs> sick people. What's a sick person? A sick person is never happy. A sick person has a problem. And the problem is the focus of their life. So their life now is being controlled by the sickness. Whatever you've got to do to try and help the body to get over this thing, you're going to do it. And that might be a whole lot of stuff. And it means that you couldn't possibly do the will of God. I'm sorry, Lord. You know, I really want to serve you, but you know, I've got to get rid of this thing in here first. Well, how long is it going to take? Well, I don't know, Lord. It may take me a few years, but I'll get rid of it, maybe, hopefully. Otherwise, I'll be dead. You see, I want you to understand today, and I'm not, listen, this is not criticism or, or judgment upon anybody here today. I came here to bless you, and that's what I want to do. So I want to make this as clear and as plain as God will allow me to do it. 